Okay. Um, right, well, I was going to tell you about last month, early last month. It was just that uh, my pal Jim and I, we've been to a gentleman's evening up in London. We were driving back while well, he was driving. Well, it's just as well he didn't have anything to drink because we got pulled by the police on the way back. They chased us all the way from Harrow right through to Hatch End before they finally stopped us. These two coppers jumped out, they were really angry, they said, we've been chasing you for nearly three miles, you must have seen our blue light flashing, why didn't you stop? Well, Jim said, my wife has just, has just run off with a copper, he said, oh, I was afraid you was bringing her back. <laughs> but, well, she's, she's a funny woman, Jim's wife, she's um, French, you know, she's a French lady, or that is, She's half French and half English. She shaves under one arm. <coughs> anyway. <laughs> when he said to me, do you know what she said to me when, when that night I, I, we got home? So I said, no, I don't know what she said. What did she say to you? She said to me, Jim, you always look better after a drink. He, he, said, he said, I haven't had a drink. She said, no, I have. <laughs> anyway, I saw, him, I, I saw him down the pub a few weeks ago. And I uh, went up to the bar, we had a drink, and um, I said to him, well, what's new with you? He said, well, nothing really. He said, well, my wife's packed up wearing a bra. I said, pardon? He said, she, she doesn't wear a bra anymore. I said, yeah, so, that's no big deal. He said, well, it's taken 15 years off of her life. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, she looks 15 years younger. So I said, well, how come your wife not wearing a bra has made her look 15 years younger? He said, well, the weight of her chest had pulled all the wrinkles out of her face. <laughs> so I said, anything else? He said, well, you know, um, I told you, he said, my, my wife had a credit card stolen. I said, that was six months ago. He said, yeah, well, I haven't reported it stolen to the authorities. He said, the guy who's got it spending less than her. <laughs> Anyway, we sat down, we took, sat down at the table, we was talking about the old times. And he said, do you remember the, when we was about 17 or 18, we used to go down to the Hammersmith Paddy on a Saturday night dancing? I said, yeah. I said, have a dance, maybe meet a girl. He said, yeah. He said, and maybe take them home when the dance finished. With that old car we had? I said, yeah, that's right. I said, do you remember we always had a condom in the back pocket just in case we got lucky? He said, yeah, he said, I've still got mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was walking past his house a few weeks ago, he was out the front sweeping up the leaves, and I noticed he had a black eye. I said, Jim, you've got a black eye? He said, I know that. I said, well, how did you get the black eye? He said, what? He said, you wouldn't believe it. He said, I was in church on Sunday. He said, we all knelt down for the prayer. And when we stood up, there's this woman in front of me, she had this blue silky dress on. He said, I noticed the back part of it got tucked in between the cheeks of her rear end. <laughs> taking in a bit of washing, as I say. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> so he said, I reached forward and I pulled it out for it. She turned around to give me a black eye. I said, well, I, I'm not surprised. I said, she had nothing to do with you. You should keep your hands to yourself, mind your own business. Anyway, a week later, I saw him down the pub again. He's got another black eye. I said, Jim, you've got another black eye. He said, I know that. I said, but how did you get the second black eye? He said, Rod, he said, you wouldn't believe it. I was in church again on Sunday. The same woman was in front of me. She had the same dress on. He said, we all knelt down for the prayer and we stood up again. The same thing happened. It all got tucked in between the cheeks of a rear end again. I said, well, you didn't. Oh, not after the last. Oh, no, no, no. He said, I knew not to touch it. He said, but the chap next to me, he noticed it. He reached over and he pulled it out. <laughs> so he said, well, I knew she didn't like it out. So I pushed it back in for her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well. I said, anyway, where was you last week? I said, you wasn't down the pub. Oh, he said, I had to go up to see, um, I went up to see the north of Scotland on, on the overnight train to see my Uncle Percy for his 80th birthday. Oh, I said, well, a good trip. He said, well, yeah. He said, well, he said, we started going and the ticket collector come round. He said, he said I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. He said, we seem to have double booked your sleeping compartment. Would you mind sharing with a lady? So Jim said, well, no, I don't mind. 
So I said, oh, great, that'll help us out. She said, I'll go and get her. So he come back, presented with, with a very attractive blonde lady, introduced her, and Jim said, well, look, I'll take the top bunk, and you have the better bottom bunk, it's a be easy for you. She said, oh, thank you very much. So I said, well, when we turned in, she, she got up to there, and I got the bottom bunk, and after a few minutes, she said, to her, Jim, are you asleep? So he said, no. She said, well, I'm cold. She said, can you reach up and get me an extra blanket out of the overhead locker? He said, I've got a better idea. He said, he said, let's, he said let's play husbands and wives, shall we? <laughs> oh, she said, I don't mind, I'm going for it. He said, right then, get it yourself. <laughs> I said, well, how is he young, Uncle Percy? 80 years old. He said, yeah, it's fine. He said, he's great. He said, in fact, he's got a girlfriend. I said, yeah. I said, but how is she then? He said, well, she's 80 as well. He said, well, apparently, he said, a couple of weeks ago, he said he, he took her out for, for dinner, went to a posh hotel and had a nice candlelit dinner with a bottle of wine, and he popped the question to her. I said, well, the old dog. I said, what did he say then? He said, well, he, he said, he, he held her hands across the table, looked into her eyes and said, well, you know, I've, always, I've become very, very fond of you over the last few months and I, I can't see myself going on life without you. And as you know, I've got my own house, a few bob in the bank. Would you marry me? So she said, well, it doesn't matter about the money so much. What's your sex life like? So he said, oh, he said, oh my age. She said, I suppose you could say it's infrequent. So she said, is that one word or two? <laughs> I found, well, um, women can be very tricky. Take my friend Dave, he lives down the road, he was telling me that many, many years ago, before the supermarkets come on the scene, that he and his wife, they used to keep a little grocery shop in Pinna. And in the afternoons, he used to go out and do deliveries in the van. And one afternoon, he went to this very attractive blonde lady to deliver the, the groceries, and she invited him for a cup of tea and a chat. Very nice, so he went down there the following week, had a cup of tea and a chat and a chocolate biscuit. The third week she, he went round here, a cup of tea, a chocolate biscuit, and she invited him upstairs. So, oh, this is fine, this is, oh, sorry, this, this is going on for a few weeks, he's telling all the lads in the pub, he's all, he's oh, really cracked it here, he said, a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit, which I said her, and then upstairs for half an hour, very nice. So, after a few weeks, she said, I've got something to tell you. So he said, what's that? She said, I'm pregnant. Oh, are you sure? Yes, yeah, so, oh, well, what can you, you know, she said, what? what? Do what women do? What? Well, up and downstairs with a bucket of cold in each hand, or, or <laughs> sit in hot baths and drink a bottle. She said, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. She said, I'm going to have this baby. What's more to the point? What are you going to do about it? He said, well, I, I can't marry you. I'm already married. You know that. Yeah? She said, he said, I can't give you money out of the till. My wife had noticed that. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 50 pounds of groceries free every week until the child's 16 years old. How's that? She said, oh, I'll agree to that. So that's what happened. He had a nice healthy boy born, and every week, never missed, 50 pounds of free groceries, week in, week out, year in, year out, until one day she said to the boy, on your way home from school, can you get the 50 pounds of free groceries? She said, oh, all right, so good. She said, make sure you see the man in there. All right, so he went into he said, Mum sent me in for 50. Shh, he said, keep your voice down. He said, so, by the way, how old are you now? He said, I was 16 last week. You were 16, right. He said, you go back and tell your mum, now you're 16 years old, there's no more free groceries, and you see the look on her face. So she goes back. Mum, the man in the shop said, now I'm 16 years old, there's no more free groceries, now I see the look on your face. She said, oh, did he? She said, well, you go back and tell the man, he was never your father anyway, you see the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he was out and he was in the high street on Saturday morning and he went and bought himself a pair of black boots. Well, um, he never get, he never buys anything without his wife being there. She has to make him go and buy new clothes. So he, he bought his black boots and he wanted to go home feeling very pleased with himself. And um, he went into the kitchen on Saturday morning, his wife's in the kitchen, he walked up and down with his new black boots on. She never said a word. So he stomped up and down, nothing. 
even done the goose step, and he said, she, she completely ignored his black boots. So that evening, he said, when we have dinner, he said, I leant back in the chair, and I put my feet up on the table, my black boots on, and nothing she did, she told him. He said, do you think she would have said, oh, they're nice, or, well, what shop did you get them, or were they in the sale, or what made you buy those, and what he said, because women was asking questions. So she said, nothing. So that night, when he went to bed, she was already gone up. He went upstairs, and she was sitting in bed from the reading the magazine. He took all his clothes off and put his black boots back on. He stood in front of her and he said, Do you notice anything different about me? So she looked over, she said, Oh, same old beer belly, and same old skinny legs, same old dingle dangle hanging down there. Said, dingle dangle. He said, Yes, yeah. he said, hanging down, pointing towards my new black boots. She said, well, it's a pity you didn't buy yourself a new hat. <laughs> How long have I got? Have I got to... One more. Well, all right, all right, okay. I'll be here all night. No, you won't. All right, all right I'll, just tell you, I'll just tell you a joke. This is about two friends, um, uh, Mary and Anne. And every week, every Thursday, they go down to the local pub to play bingo. And they come out one night, 11 o'clock, they're walking home along this country lane, and Mary said to Anne, oh, I wish I'd gone to Lou before we came out. And she said, that beer's going right through me. And Anne said, yeah, me as well. What can we do? So Mary said, well, look, there's, there's a church churchyard over there. We could go around behind the, you know, the wall. We could, we could um, squat down, crouch down there and do what we have to do. And if anybody comes